Hi, I'm Robert Bolaños. In this video, I will be measuring the negative resistance of a power supply. Okay, so what is negative resistance? It's kind of a uh, unusual concept. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, explore and talk about, about it a little bit. Well, because of the negative feedback of the converter, the power supply converter is actually a constant power uh, unit, meaning that your your output power and your input power uh, track to each other. Okay, and we're going to assume that we have 100% efficiency. So with that. Assuming that you have a hundred percent efficiency, then you can say that the input power will always be the same as your output power and vice versa. Okay. So another way of uh, expressing power would be the voltage squared divided by the input or your resistance. So this equation V input squared, R input squared, is another way of expressing input power. And like so, we can express output power as V out squared divided by R out. Okay, so here we have the same equation. Okay, and if we solve for Rn, we end up with this equation. This is the equation that you want to use. So I'm going to put it in the box. Okay. And remember this equation is assuming 100% efficiency. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So another way of expressing uh, resistance is voltage over current so we can kind of hand wave and say that the input resistance is proportional at least to V in divided by uh, I input okay so now that I made that statement then we can say that V in and V uh, current input they're going to be the same as V out and I out. Okay, this is again because this is a constant power. You can make that statement. So basically, if you vary uh, your input voltage, okay, let's say you you put a wiggle and let's say the input voltage goes out. Uh, up your if you have a good uh, feedback system your output voltage is going to be the same and if your output voltage is the same your current is going to be the same okay now what about the input okay and specifically what about I input what happens well as you increase V in goes up your I input is going to decrease so you keep the same power okay <clears throat> excuse me so because of that you actually experience a negative delta at your input uh, current. So if you have an input current then you can say that you have a negative resistance. Okay, And this you can think of it as a, a small signal Rn. Ok. 
Okay. So that's where the concept of uh, negative resistance to the input of a power supply comes from. Okay. Okay. So here I'm using the same equation that I use up there, except that now I'm accounting for efficiency right here. This is because of the power losses. Okay. So this is going to be efficiency. Okay, I'm using the same equation. And now here is my data from my flyback. Here I have my input voltage, my efficiency, and these are my output voltages. Okay, and here are my loads. Okay, and when I calculate the resistance, I get 88 for the first uh, output voltage, about 378 for the second output voltage, and then a little bit under 2K for the third. And then when you put them in parallel and solve them, we end up with 68.9 so this should be at least close negative 60 let's say 69 ohms this should be the negative res uh, resistance that the f my flyback should measure at least close to it okay so what equipment do I need? Okay. Well, the equipment that I would need is a FRA, like the Bodhi 100 from Omnicron. And then you're also going to need a line injector, like the PicoTest J2121A. Okay, you need both of these to, to measure. By the way, you can use these to also measure the input impedance, but in this case, we're going to measure the negative resistance okay so I'm going to talk a little bit about the J2121 how it works in my case I'm going to have an input voltage fed on the right side in my case I'm going to put 12 volts input now this uh, injector can you can put up to 400 and 400 volts and 20 amps but in my case it's just 12 volts the 12 volts goes and is routed through let me see where my sorry there it is okay it's routed the 12 volts is routed through and it comes out through the left side or the right side and you would connect it to your power supply. In my case, I'm going to connect it to my flyback. Okay. And then that 12 volts actually has a AC signal. And that comes from this source. This will go to the Bodhi. 100 and it goes to the output of the generator okay so basically the generator is going to output a little signal which is going to modulate the 12 volts the signal goes into this amplifier I believe and it's going to modulate this 12 volts okay now to make a measurement we need a voltage and a current so we'll connect channel 1 or actually channel 2 to measure voltage and 
at the input of the power supply. Okay, and we also need a current source. That current signal is internal to the J2121A. That signal comes out through this BNC. This will go to channel 1. And that will measure the current. So V over I will give you R. Okay. So here is a simplified uh, schematic of my power supply. Uh, what's unusual is that I'm not using a, an auxiliary winding to take over and power the, the, the PWM. Instead, I'm, I left it connected to the input voltage, which is 12 volts. Okay, so I have to modify the circuit a little bit. But basically, you have the PWM here got the input filter and we got the flyback here or the converter and basically I want to measure later on eventually I want to measure the impedance there but in this case I'm interested in this impedance for now this is the RN I'm sorry RN that I want to measure okay so we want to break the circuit into two circuits. We want to break it up into the input filter, isolated, and the flyback converter. I want to basically, I want to measure this part. Okay. Without the PWM. Okay. So, what do I do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that wire. Basically, I'm going to lift the wire or the positive end of my flyback. And that's going to co connect to the my uh, Bode 100 and the J2121A injector. So you'll see it right here. So this is what I'm going to do. So basically, I'm going to have one power supply powering the PWM. And then I'm going to have a second power supply. This is the second. That's going to power the actual converter. So that's going to go through. And going to um, supply 12 volts. And I'm going to measure the impedance or the negative resistance looking in there. Okay. Now that you know, now let's measure the negative resistance of the, my flyback. Okay, here we're going to do a measurement of the input impedance but in this case we're going to do it without the input filter so basically we're going to measure the impedance of the converter itself without the input filter first of all if we disconnect the the hot side uh, input of the primary of the flyback uh, we don't get any power so in this case I lifted the pin, okay, and I connected it to the 12 volts coming in from the J2121A injector, okay. So the injector is injecting a signal from the Bode 100, it modulates the 12 volts and then it measures the current and that current is routed to channel one okay so then that that input voltage is coming in to the flyback here and i'm going to monitor the input voltage with this uh 
probe, the PML uh, 1110. It's a 10 times 10 X probe, and that's gonna go to your channel two. Okay, so there is where uh, is a little bit different. If I disconnect this 12 volts here, my PWM doesn't work. So I have to put a second supply. Okay. I'm connecting it to the input so I can power my PWM. Okay. So I have two supplies. But the one that I want to measure is this one. Because this is the, the input of the flyback. Okay. So that's how you configure it. So now we go to and take a measurement. Start the measurement here. And we'll go ahead and do a sweep from 10 hertz to 40 megahertz. And we'll do a 30 or 300 hertz filter and we'll increase this to 30 dB attenuation and we'll press continuous and here is the impedance okay so the blue plot is the phase so we'll get rid of that because I'm interested in the magnitude so this is the impedance if you notice this is magnitude and the units is in ohms so you started around maybe uh, 20 30 40 40 ohms goes up to 60 and so forth and it increases a little bit but uh, but this is the input impedance okay so now I don't think anybody has measured the negative resistance at least I haven't seen any videos on YouTube I may be wrong and if I am please let me know but I think this may be the first time anyone has done it and posted it on YouTube so let's see and the one that told me about this was uh, Pico test uh, Steve Sandler said that you could measure it so let's see if it's true we'll do the let's see real that's what we want real and hold and behold he's absolutely right if you notice here the the measurement where the control is still active if you notice it's a negative that is very this is the first time I've seen a negative plot other than on my simulator but this kind of need to see that you do have uh, negative resistance okay so let's expand that and it's around 50 ish 60 ish ohms uh, during the bandwidth of the control loop okay and then once the control loop doesn't can't control it then it goes to the positive but this is neat to be able to see this. I mean, this is like I said, this is the first time I ever done this type of measurement, and I think it's pretty eye-opening that the concept of negative resistance is is something really real. Okay, the measured negative resistance is very close to what I calculated. So that's the way you measure the. A negative resistance. Thank you for watching.